All right, let me get myself uh, together here. Um, <clears throat> before I get started, there's a few things I want to mention. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we have a birthday today. And a, f- a friend of mine, a friend of ours, uh, it is the birthday of our Broken Arrow Public School District Superintendent, Janet Dunlop. So happy birthday, Janet. <clears throat> I hope that you have a wonderful day. Uh, secondly, as I got to mention, Broken Air Public Schools, I'm surprised and not surprised if they haven't actually, their feet haven't touched the ground yet. But for those of you who may know, about two weeks ago this Friday, uh, the Broken Air Tiger, Tigers won their, we won our first state uh, football championship in Oklahoma. So congratulations, Janet, from you and your team. Steve, Cheryl. I was able to uh, see three or four games this year as well as to listen to a number of them on, on the radio. I wasn't able to attend a couple of the meetings. Uh, I can tell you it was very, very exciting, and it was a very special year for uh, being a Broken Arrow Tiger. So thank you for your leadership and and help bringing that home. I know what it takes to be a good student athlete, and so I know, Chuck, you're very much involved in that, so thank you very much. I also want to mention, as uh, Jason talked about this, is that we have a lot of uh, elected officials or their representatives uh, from the state of Oklahoma. Uh, I look around, uh, too many for me to mention, but I do want to say is that I know we have representation from our congressmen. We also have uh, our state officials. We have our county officials here, our newly elected county officials, uh, re-elected county officials. We have school board members. We have a couple here. We have uh, Lisa Ford from the uh, Union Public Schools. Excuse me. Uh, I just want to say thank you. I mean, I think that you're going to hear from one of our council members about the importance of partnerships and relationships and maintaining a great relationship uh, with our our state officials and federal officials because if, in fact, uh, we do not, then our ceiling is right here. So um, thank you very much for being here, especially to all those that are newly elected. We look forward to working with you. Uh, I feel very encouraged right now about the enthusiasm and the earnest desire to, to serve that I see amongst those that got elected, and that, is, that excites me. It really, really does. I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Okay, on behalf of the Broken Air City Council and myself, I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, this year's State of uh, the City Address. This is my fourth city address, and I can tell you that I consider it an honor to come before the Chamber of Membership to talk about all the great things that are happening in our city. Now, I have some good news, and I have some great news, okay? The good news is you're going to get to hear about how well our city is doing. The great news is, a month ago I had a right knee replacement, so I can't stand for 45 minutes. Okay. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, let's go. Alex, lead that. Alex, one more time. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I cannot stand for 45 minutes. My goal is to only use the chair a couple of times. Uh, but the challenge is going to be is how to concisely, yet thoroughly, describe how well our community is doing. And I'm certainly going to try that. If I end up going the normal length, I'm sorry, you'll be out of here by 1 o'clock or so, and then you won't have to hear me do this again until next year. So, uh, but it is, it is a privilege to be here. I want to start off by taking this opportunity to acknowledge and to thank Kenny Tilly and also to Ruth Littlefield. Where's Ruth? Where is she at? Ruth, there she is. Uh, for what I believe is unwavering stewardship uh, of our community of our chamber and our EDC for the last seven months. I very much appreciate all that you've done for us. Let's give them a round of applause, folks. <laughs> Likewise, I want to take this opportunity to, uh, to recognize Mike Cooper uh, for his leadership of our chamber board and also for Ted Cunda for the leader- leadership of the EDC. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate your support. <laughs> okay. There's a quote up on the board, which I'm going to turn around, that basically says, local government is where leadership matters the most. I wanted to kick off my presentation today to share with you my personal belief. My personal belief that this is the foundation, leadership, at the local level where it all starts. And to me, this is where local government is where the proverbial rubber meets the road more than any other level of government. I believe every level of government is, is important. But in terms of what we do for the citizens and businesses of our community, this is where the most common sense public policy is developed, and this is where we touch the lives of the citizens on a regular basis. Some of those examples of how we represent citizens and work with them on a daily basis include the work we do on our streets and roads, the delivery of our water and sewer, stormwater, public safety, parks and recreation. 
I also know this, is that in my experience, knowledgeable and compassionate leadership can and will almost always solve any problem and will help take advantage of any opportunity that is presented before us every single day. Now, I believe when you do a State of the City address, it's important not only to hear from the city manager, but also from your elected officials, the people that have to stand accountable to the community every three or four years on how, the, on how well the city is doing. And so that's why, as a part of my presentation, I have infused three short videos where you will hear from your elected officials, city staff, as well as a local developer on what their view is about the state of our city. Unfortunately, Mayor Thurman could not be with us today because he had another commitment in Washington. However, we were able to tape a welcome message from Craig. So in a minute, I'm going to show that video. And then we have two other videos that we're going to show. They're very short. Uh, both of these vid videos are in the words of city council members and staff, how they see the state of our city. And I think that's important that we hear from those in our community that represent us and how they feel. So at this time, I'd like to ask if we could show the mayor's welcome. Hello everyone, thank you for being here at the State of the City Address. I want to apologize for not being there with you. The National League of Cities appointed me to the board of the Institute of Building Technology and Safety, and I'm attending one of their board meetings this week. Before Michael gets started with his presentation, let me highlight some of the accolades we received this year, all possible thanks to our amazing staff and citizens. First in February, USA Today recognized the Rose District as one of the 50 most charming main streets in the country. Then in May, we were recognized as the ninth safest city, over 100,000 in the United States, based on FBI stats. In June, the U.S. Conference of Mayors awarded us the most livable city in the country, along with Tampa Bay. A month later, Wallet Hub named us the best place in the U.S. for first-time home buyers, and in November, Route 50 Magazine put us in the group of top 10 finalists for the Navigator Awards for innovation. You can see that Broken Air is really on a roll, and Michael Spurgeon is going to share with you all the great things we have accomplished this year and what's planned for the year ahead. Again, Craig, apologize he couldn't be here, but I felt it would be important that we hear from, from our mayor on how he feels about the city he's doing. <clears throat> what is the current state of our city? You know, if you stop and reflect upon that just for a second, I promise you that everyone would probably have a different view or belief about what the, the state of our city is. To me, it means having all of us having a sincere, a sincere desire to be a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. In that context, if you look around this room and you see who's here today, you don't have to look any further to know that the state of our city, the state of this community is strong. What you have here today is you have individuals from the public sector and the private sector all here for one reason. And that one reason is for the betterment and advancement of Broken Arrow. And I can tell you there's a lot of communities in this, in this country, in this state, that don't have the, what we have here in Broken Arrow. It is very unique to have everyone thinking about something bigger than themselves. And once again, if you just stop and take a look, we heard there's new businesses that have joined the chamber. We have a lot of folks that have been members of the chamber for many, many years. But when you have state officials, federal representation, local officials, school officials, city officials together, along with people that are here that are making investments, it's a great thing. And so regardless of what I say, there's no question in my mind the state of this city is very strong. Now, with my, from my perspective, you break, you break down our, what the city means to have success into two parts. You have the private sector and you have the public sector. In very simple terms, the private sector has the responsibility to help create jobs and increase the wealth of our community. And the city, the public sector, has the responsibility to take the resources we receive, whether it's the city or the school district, and turn those dollars into great public services. And if you look at the Broken Arrow community and the quality of education, the quality of city services you receive, you can see that we are a thriving and very successful city. The city has a responsibility as a part of how well we're doing is to create an environment that encourages private investment and encourages private reinvestment. And I think that we're doing that with the policies that we are creating and the support and the efforts we have from our department directors. And I promise you folks, and some of you have been other places around the country, is they, they covet what we have. They covet to have an organization that can bring people together from both sectors that have the earnest desire to see a community to move forward. And I think we have that in Broken Arrow. Now, 
the agenda for today is I'm going to briefly talk about the state of the city. Um, secondly, is I'm going to mention a few of our successes for 2018. I'm also going to mention a few things that are going to be important for 2019. And then I have three key takeaways that I'd act, ask you to remember as we leave here and we go about the rest of the year and get ready to spend the holidays with our family. Before doing so, I'd like to show our second video so we can hear from our council members and a couple members of our staff. Over the last several years, we've accomplished a lot in Broken Arrow, and we've been awarded for that. Whether you consider the Rose District, our bond elections, I believe we've accomplished a lot. But we're just getting started. I think the horizon is just opening up for our great city, and I'm excited about what the future holds. I want to thank the council, the chamber, the school districts, our residents, and our businesses throughout Broken Arrow for making this city the best place to live. I especially want to thank everyone for their ongoing support of our general obligation bond packages over the years. The most recent bond package voted on August 2018 will improve on an already fantastic road system in many parts of our city. It includes widening some of our heavy traffic streets, repaving many other roads, and maintaining both our arterial and residential streets. So watch for these projects all over the city in the coming years. We're a blessed community and have received so many honors and accolades in 2018. I see an even brighter 2019 for all of Broken Arrow. It's hard to believe that I am already halfway through my first term as your Ward 1 City Councilor. It's been such an honor to serve you, and I love this city and have such a passion for it. That's what drives me to work harder to keep our quality of life as high as it is. People are so proud to call this place home, and I want to keep it that way, and keep BA as one of the safest cities in Oklahoma. All throughout the state, people are taking notice of the great things happening here. That's why it's important for us to keep working closely with our state legislators and maintain those lines of communication. When it comes to all things municipal government, we want Broken Arrow to be the leader in this state. This is my first year at the city of Broken Arrow, and I'm so excited to be part of such a supportive and forward-thinking leadership team. Back in August, the voters of Broken Arrow passed a $210 million bond, 70% of which is dedicated to street improvements. Some of the big projects coming up will be residential street improvements for a few of our neighborhoods, increasing connectivity with sidewalks, and infrastructure improvements downtown. A small portion of the bond has also been reserved for drainage projects. These include improvements for the Tiger Creek Nature Park, improvements near Indian Springs, and improvements along Hakey Creek. All of these projects will help reduce flood risk for nearby residential areas. I want to thank my fellow councilors for the vision for our city and the great leadership they have shown in moving Broken Air forward. Our success has been possible thanks to the teamwork and collaboration with the Broken Air Chamber, our citizens, and the school districts, especially Broken Air Public Schools. Another reason we're able to accomplish so much is that we have dedicated staff who work for the city of Broken Arrow. They understand the council's mission and work tirelessly to make our projects and issues a reality. Part of that is establishing partnerships with federal agencies who help us in getting federal grants and funding, which in turn saves our taxpayers money. This year, we received $7 million in federal funding for transportation projects, and we're hoping to receive more large grants in the future, like the $5 million build grant. So I wanna thank the council members. Uh, we have one more slide, but I wanna thank those for taking the time to express their views uh, on how they view the state of our city. So how's Broken Air doing? One of the most important responsibilities and function of the governing body and myself is financial management. We have to make sure that not only today but going forward that we have the resources available to meet the needs and expectations of the citizens of our community. Each year we build a budget that prioritizes the funds that we receive and what we believe the community expects to be outstanding public services. You know, as they say, this is where the sausage is made and on the other end comes out excellent municipal services and I'm very pleased to say that the time and effort that's put forth by the department directors, their staff and the city council to thoroughly analyze the budget and making sure that we justify those expenditures, uh, they spend a lot of effort. I want to thank all of them for, for what they do to make sure that they, they have a good financial plan for their departments which actually turns into an overall, overall financial plan for our community. I am very excited to share with you how the city is doing for the first six months of the year. You know, we do have some new members here. I guess I'm not supposed to touch it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> it says don't touch the mic. 
I've been doing this for four years. I've never noticed that, that, little, that little note right there. Okay. All right. All right. So we have, what I was going to say is we have some new chamber members, and I wanted to make sure that there's some fun facts we have about the city. So I'm going to turn around. Here's what it's interesting is that right now our population uh, is around 112,000, and we believe when the 2020 census comes out is that we will be somewhere around 115,000, if, if not larger. We're seeing about 500 new uh, housing units each year, and Michael Skates anticipates that we will continue to see that level of, of building in our community. Um, you know, it's interesting is that whether we're 112 or 115, we are one of the largest Russ Russell Peterson said, we are one of the largest 280 cities in the country. And when you think about Broken Arrow, you don't think about a city being 112, 115, being in the top 280, but we are. Uh, that's, that's a tremendous accomplishment for our city, and there's a lot of responsibilities to go with that. Secondly is our city is 58 square miles, and I can tell you is that we're only about a half built out. So there's still tremendous opportunities for growth within our community, mainly in, in Wagner County. Rocky Hinkle, our new streets and stormwater director, he's responsible for over 500 miles of uh, maintenance of roads and through the general obligation bond package as well as the street tax for maintenance that the voters repurposed a couple of years ago, we now have the adequate funds to actually put together an effective, comprehensive street maintenance plan to be able to take care of our most valuable infrastructure. We have three public school districts. A lot of times uh, people think that, you know, we just have one school district, but we actually have three in this city. We have, we have the Broken Air Public Schools, we also have Union Public Schools, and we also have a sliver that also has Bip Bip uh, Bixby Public Schools. And so we have three excellent school districts with, within our community. Most communities can't, ma can't make that accolade. Here's an interesting fact. You talk about density and growth. Every day there's 95,000 cars that travel on the Broken Air Expressway between about Lynn Lane and Ollie. That is a huge number of cars that travel, and it's only increasing. You compare that to about the same distance down on the Creek Turnpike in the south, there's about 15,000 or less cars. So you can see where the, where the actual uh, the, the, the commerce, why it's happening is because that's where, where the, the density is. And finally, here's something that I sometimes forget is we have over 800 subdivisions within, within our city. That's a lot. When you have 800 subdivisions, some that have been here for many years, some that are brand new, but you think about it, that's over 800 subdivisions that we are responsible for. Now, with respect to the actual budget itself, after much discussion and debate, last June the City Council approved an annual budget of just over $250 million uh, for FY 2019. You know, when you talk about running a city government, that's a very tall order. Uh, I absolutely love the challenge, but I can tell you it's not easy. And the reason that it's not easy is because trying to balance and represent the interest of the City Council, our citizens, businesses, our employee groups, and stakeholders is not easy because I promise you there are always more requests than there is funding. And so when I put the budget together and present it to the Council every year, I keep three things in mind. First and foremost, I always keep a very important emphasis on public safety. And I consider public safety to be police, fire, emergency services, and community development because you have to have a strong code enforcement problem, uh, com uh, uh, code enforcement division within community service to make sure that your property stay in compliance. And you look around Broken Arrow, we have very few code enforcement problems. Now, Michael Skates could probably find them for you, but I can promise you they're, they're hard to find because they do a great job. And our citizens have such pride in our, in our community that they take care of the properties themselves. So always a, a strong emphasis on public safety. Secondly, is department directors have to justify and they're held accountable for their expenditures. Uh, bottom line is, is that we have very limited revenue and so they have to come in every year and justify the expenses. And then finally is everything I do tries to be based on smart investments that are aimed at helping Broken Arrow thrive, remain a healthy and innovative type city. So to have a $254 million budget, uh, I'm very proud to say that, you know, that we do run very lean as you'll see. But for the most part, the, the council has given us the resources to provide our community with great public services. On this slide, I've listed the major categories of expenditures. As you will note, uh, we are a very capital improvement laden community. As a growing community, we will continue to see major investments and reinvestments in our public infrastructure. As you're a growing community, you've got to make sure that your road system is wide enough to accommodate your traffic, that your stormwater systems can handle the water that comes off of the roads, that your uh, water and sewer systems can deliver potable water or to be able to process it as it leaves our homes. And so we're constantly working on that, and these major investments are going to be necessary. 
you know, notwithstanding our focus on capital improvements, our biggest and most valuable resource is our employees. They're the ones that are tasked with going out every single day to work with the citizen businesses to provide great services. And I can tell you I'm very proud of each and every one of them, and I want to use this opportunity to send a shout-out to all of them and thank them for the job that they do. Now, <laughs> thank you. I very much appreciate that. With regard to the financial condition of the city, our current bond rating, which many of you financial gurus understand, your bond rating is something that's very important, very, very sacred to a city or a school district. Our bond rating is what I call a double A3. The rating agencies consider Broken Air to be a very stable investment. Being a stable investment basically helps us whenever we have to issue debt for public improvements is that we get very good interest rates that we have when we come to have to pay back the principal and interest on, on the bonds that are issued. The second thing I'm very proud of is the city council mandates that we stay in compliance with our, our policy for uh, reserves. And the council says that we want to maintain at least a 10% reserve fund balance to make sure that should there be uh, some type of break in continuity, a natural or man-made disaster where we, a portion of our community is unfortunately lost for a period of time, we have to be able to have funds available to continue with the continuity of government. And having a reserve policy of 10% helps us be able to approximately six months be able to meet the needs of the community until we can reestablish that continuity. We also, the City Council also serves as the Municipal Utility Authority. And two years ago, um, I recommended that we come up with a reserve policy for the utility authority that was much more realistic, which is 90 days. And right now, we're right at 70 days of, of revenue and resources. And I believe by the end of next year, we should be very close, if not meet that 90-day reserve. And so I'm very proud of the physical responsibility that we take as a council and as administration to make sure that we're doing the very best with your tax dollars today, but also planning should there be something happening within the community. So how the city's doing over the first six months of the year, I'm pleased to tell you that sales tax collections are on pace with our projections. The use tax collections are slightly up this year. And if you remember, earlier this year, the Supreme Court made a decision involving a case out of South Dakota regarding the sales tax being charged on the internet. And we're starting to see sales tax, excuse me, use tax collections to be up slightly as a result of those additional taxes. And that's great. However, however, this is my opportunity to plug the, plug the fact that we have to support brick and mortar. I mean, every single person in here that's a member of this chamber has, I believe, probably a brick and mortar business. You're the folks that are actually out there that are creating the jobs, that have made the investments, that have borrowed the money, either from, either from someone or, or a financial institution, to, to build the buildings, to create the jobs, and we need to support those local businesses. And so I encourage everybody, if you can, when you can, support the local businesses, because what happens, that money turns back over into tax dollars that we use to be able to provide important public services. And finally, our operational expenses are just below budget. That's a really good thing because make, we make sure we run very lean. And so right now I'm, had to say, I'm pleased to say that our expenses are just under the budget. The next slide I put up there, I, I think it's important to know that right now the city has just un, under 800 employees full and part-time. Statistically, they say that a city should have, about, should have about 100 employees per 1,000 population. So if you look at that, Broken Arrow really should have about 1,200 employees, yet we only have about 800. And I'll, I'll put these folks up against anybody around. The quality of leadership, the commitment we have for the frontline employees, uh, they do a great job. There is a lot asked of them, without question, and they will tell you that. Uh, but I promise you is that we are getting the very best and I can tell you, we have a great workforce that love to be here, and they care about their jobs. And I'm very proud to say that we're under that, uh, that benchmark, but yet we're still getting a lot done for our community. I also want to point out, as a demonstration of our commitment to public safety, is our public safety workforce, both sworn as well as our firefighters and our civilian personnel, is about half. It's, a, it's about half, and I think that's important because public safety is the foundation on, on which we all stand. And finally, with regard to our employees, many of those employees live in town, and they do a great job for us. And once again, I just want to thank you for recognizing them because they do have the city's best interests at heart. And I can tell you is that uh, they, they appreciate the support they get from all of you. And this time, let's show the third video. Well, we uh, have another academy ongoing currently. 
Uh, we're well on our way to hiring the 20 new officers off the public safety sales tax. This year we uh, did a video segment highlighting some of our telecommunicators, uh, kind of showing the job, what they do, what it means to them. Uh, our communications specialists uh, handle approximately 80,000 911 calls. Most people don't realize that the 911 center here handles all police, fire, medical, and emergency calls for the entire city of about 115,000 people. Our animal control uh, specialists are doing a great job of our adoption rate. Uh, and this year, our adoption rate is up to 89%. Uh, we've dedicated one employee to do nothing but outreach to rescue groups as an adoption specialist to make sure we're finding our pets a forever home. I have been with the city now for eight months, and what a wonderful place Broken Arrow is. There's so much going on with all the bond packages that our residents have approved. It's exciting that we have sold the first series of the 2018 election and we are moving forward. I'm also happy to report that sales tax is coming in strong for this fiscal year and that's great news because sales tax is our main source of revenue. Speaking of taxes, we are committed to being good stewards of your money and that's why we have adopted the Council of Sponsoring Organization Internal Control Integrated Framework to accomplish and monitor this. A quality community to me is one where people work together to continue improving where they live. This is Broken Era. I have seen our citizens working together to make this city a quality city. In the latest bond preparation process, our citizens exemplified community by sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals at our GEO bond meetings. The projects that were voted on in 2018 were the result of citizen-driven decisions. They passed the bond issues by margins that were the envy of community leaders throughout the state. Also important to the progress and strengths of our community is ongoing active citizen participation on city boards and committees. And thanks to programs like Leadership Broken Arrow and the Broken Arrow Youth City Council, I'm excited to see how our citizens will continue shaping the future of our dynamic city. Earlier this year, Milestone broke ground on the largest investment to date in the Rose District. This $22 million mixed-use project will serve as a gateway to Main Street. In addition to retail and office space, our luxury apartments will provide more of the residential density that is needed to support the businesses that are downtown. Bringing residential urban living to the Rose District is the wave of tomorrow. Broken Arrow is a city that's competing on a national level, and we at Milestone are excited to be part of this incredible next phase. You know, I did an interview before the, the meeting, and one of the reporters asked me, he, he, the question was, you know, there's a lot of communities that are trying to emulate what Broken Arrow's done with its Rose District, and how do I feel about that? Am I, am I does that, is that flattering? Are you jealous? And, you know, my response was something to the effect is that you can't be a suburb of nothing. And I think it's important that Broken Arrow be a leader in all things municipal. And if we can help other communities within this region be successful, whether it's emulating something we've done with the Rose District or it's something we do with best practices, the way we govern our citizens, we want to share that because we want the entire region to be successful. We have elected officials here that don't only represent the city of Broken Arrow, but they represent other parts uh, of these two great counties that, that we live in. And so us, from us, from my perspective, and the council and the staff, is that we believe that, you know, if Broken Air can help the other communities be successful, we, we certainly will. Okay, the 2018 year in review. The knee's actually feeling okay. I sat down for a second, but I'm going to move quickly here. Um, I'm very excited to share with you just a couple of our successes from uh, this, this current year that's about to end. First and foremost, I'm pleased to share with you that the third edition of the City's Thrive newsletter is going to be on the street this week. And for those of you that have received this before, uh, I'd ask for you to look for it. Uh, what we did three years ago, we actually put together an edition, a newsletter that focuses on finances, projects, and also gives us a comparison with other cities on our rates and charges. And I believe it's delivered to every single home. Uh, there are many things that I'm proud about with this. For me, being an infrastructure guy, I think it's important that the voters be able to see what we're doing with their tax dollars in terms of projects. But I'm very proud of this. I'd like to thank Krista Flash and her team for, for putting this together because it's, it's an outstanding document. She did a PSA last week, and I had three city managers from the state ask me if I would get this to them. And so that just shows you the type of quality of work that our staff does. 
The next picture that you have behind you, and I actually set this, uh, before you I should say I set this up, is that uh, Steve Easley from Milestone actually talked to you about the project, and fortunately there's some construction going on right across the street. Um, we partnered with Milestone to, to bring that project to the downtown. That is a project, it's a multi-use project, mixed-use project that's going to bring 30,000 square feet of commercial and retail space in addition to about 95 uh, luxury type apartments to, to our downtown. That's a $20 million investment to the Broken Arrow downtown and to the Broken Arrow community. And we're very excited about that because I think what you have to try to do is to continue to be unique. And this gives us the next evolution of making sure that our roads are a place where people want to come to and enjoy whether it's to live, work, or play. The next picture is something that I am extremely proud of, and that is the rededication of our Vietnam Memorial. Uh, we have many veterans sitting in this room, and Broken Arrow is a community that has uh, embraced the veterans. And the city council told me shortly after I started is they said, Michael, we want to relocate the current Vietnam War Memorial from Central Park into the Veterans Memorial Park, and last summer we were able to do so. And if you haven't seen the, the new monument and that we dedicated, you really need to go out there. Veterans Park is, is an awesome place where you have the Medal of Honor, statue of the Medal of Honor winner. You also have other individuals that have recognized, recognized for their service. For me, the rededication uh, of the Vietnam War Memorial into Veterans Park to recognize those folks from our community, many of those people you knew, I know the council members knew many of them, who made the ultimate sacrifice for our community in this great nation was certainly worthy of that investment, and I'm very pleased to say that we completed this, that this year. Now, with regards to recognition and awards, uh, the mayor talked about in the video the awards we received yesterday, uh, coincidentally, 24-7 uh, Wall Street listed Broken Arrow as the 19th safest city in America. 19th safest city in America. Uh, this is according to FBI statistics, and so I know there was a press release that was put out about this. I just want to say that this award, it, it actually exemplifies the great residents and businesses that we have and the partnerships that we have with the community. I know Lisa Ford works very hard, for example, to be out and ingratiate herself as well as Chief Barry Hill. If you haven't met our PIO, uh, James Cook, he, he's amazing. Okay, and also the other officers, Officer Peel, uh, we try to make, put ourselves out amongst the community, and so they feel like that they have access to us. But it, what it demonstrates is Broken Air is a safe place to live, work, and play, and I do give the credit for this to the residents, but I also give the credit to the Broken Air Police Department and Broken Air Fire Department because we have a great community, we have a safe community, and under Chief Barry Hill's leadership and his leadership team, as well as the approximately 200 dedicated employees in the police department, uh, we have crime, don't get me wrong folks, uh, we have our incidents and we will continue to have those incidents. What is the true value of a department is how you handle those incidents, how you're out there being proactive, trying to avoid things that are happening and when something does happen, you get on it and you deal with it, you solve it and you hold those people accountable and I can promise you our people do it in the most compassionate, with the most expertise as they can to make sure that people know if you come to Broken Air, if you break the law, there's a good possibility that you're going to get caught. And that's the kind of reputation that we have, and I, I thank Chief Barry Hill for providing that leadership. <laughs> so it's 2018, actually, the, mo the thing we did the most, and if you ask my staff, they'll probably roll your eyes because we talked about it at nauseum, and that is the general obligation bond package. Um, we asked the voters to consider a reinvestment, and we did it in August and we came up with a package that totaled $211 million, and I'm proud to say that the Broken Arrow community once again stepped up and approved all six propositions. And five of those propositions received about 73% approval rating, and one proposition received about 64%, and I think it would have been higher, but what's interesting is if you voted in town, you had to turn the, you had to turn the page. You had to vote for one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Well, some people didn't turn the page. Okay, and so we had to send out a lot of social media communication to say, hey, turn the page, turn the page. So I truly believe that if, in fact, those that didn't turn the page earlier in the day, that 64 might have been, would, would have been much higher. What I'm excited about, and I want to recognize Russell Peterson in the back because Russell uh, was amazing in terms of leading that uh, private effort to raise funds and to communicate, is that was 88 projects that we're actually going to, 
to issue over the next 10 years to continue to grow and redevelop our infrastructure. And that, that is just, it's, it's amazing. Krista Flash, where's Krista? Krista did an amazing job of, of leading the effort to do the public education. Uh, I was on her incessantly, uh, and she was just money the entire time. And I want to thank you, Krista. I want to publicly thank you for your efforts. Um, you know, something that's important to me, which has an effect, and it's like a rippling effect, is that my, my focus this year personally, when I wasn't on the bond package, was focused on a concept called servant leadership, which really makes finding the balance between being a servant and being a leader. And so we spent a lot of time in our organization amongst the leadership team understanding the why. Why are we here? Why are we doing what we're doing? that it's not just about you, it's not just about your department, it's about you figuring out how to help those people that live here, that work here, that have made investments. And, and it is my responsibility, and I take this very seriously, to put people in the right leadership position to get the job done. And I think behind me you see some of those folks that are up there, and I'm proud to tell you that each and every one of them is the right person to be in the position that's leading this organization. I'm just the person that basically says, here are the parameters, here are the curbs, let's go get it done. And I'm very proud of them, and they're all here, and they're up there on the board, except for one, Scott Esmond, who unfortunately decided to retire. Scott has been with us for many years, and he's announced his retirement uh, in January 4th. And I can tell you, uh, Scott has done an amazing job, and he has left the Parks and Recreation Department much better than he found it. And we're very beholding and indebted to Scott for his efforts, and we're definitely going to miss him. Now, that creates an opportunity for us to find someone new that understands the concept of servant leadership, and I certainly know that we will. The other thing that I had to work to do was to try to foster and create a, a, an atmosphere and a culture of trust and one that emphasizes the, the importance of accountability. It's very important that people understand is that you know, you, there has to be some accountability for what you do and I think the directors have embraced that and understand is that we got great employees but there has to be, here's what we expect you to do and, and they're, they're responding. And I think we've also created a, an environment, I have many rank and file employees that are here today, a one that everyone's input is welcomed and in value. And I think if you ask anybody that works that's here today, they'll tell you that they feel like they can tell me anything they want. I may not like it, but they're, they, have, they have opportunity to just share with me their views and values, and we will find the best solution for the citizen of Broken Arrow. Strategic visioning. That's something else we worked hard on this year. The administration spends a considerable amount of time focusing on today, but we don't stop thinking about tomorrow because tomorrow will be here before you know it. Perfect example of that, under Michael Skate's leadership, we are about to finish our comprehensive plan, which is going to guide us for the next 10 years. And under Scott Esmond, we're about to finish up our Parks and Recreation Master Plan. So those are two guiding documents that are going to help the growth of the community, as well as making sure that we have the right mixture of passive and active recreation to support our citizens. And then finally, the City Council late last year passed our new downtown residential overlay district. In the last three years, we've had over 40 new single-family structures built within the Rose District, and I can count at least a dozen more that will be, are currently or will be under, under construction in the very few, uh, very near future, very few months. We want to continue to, to encourage the investment in the downtown for, for residential because we need the density, whether it's additional people that are working down here or living down here to support the brick and mortar. And I think with our DROD, we've created that environment that's going to foster or continue to foster the private investment that we're seeing in residential, just like we did with regard to the commercial that we saw and we're currently seeing. I can assure you that there are four things that we will continue to focus on, and they are transparency, policy implementation, community development, and great city services. For me, with regard to public safety, this is where it starts and ends. It's all about providing the citizens of our community the very best services that we can afford to provide. With regard to, to capital improvements, I want to tell you that right now in 2018 and 2019, the city has almost $90 million worth of projects. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's me. Okay. <laughs> That was, for the, that was for the knee surgery, okay? Uh, we have over 90 million, and that was just not a shot, I actually did a little bit of that. Um, we have over 90 million projects that are under, under some form of the construction life cycle. And I'm very pleased with Kenny Schwab and his team, Alex Mills. I mean, I'm on Alex all the time about meeting those expectations, so thank you guys. Okay, then probably the most important thing we're gonna do that's a public policy and that is the City Council has authorized two pilot programs for recycling. Okay, and so let me just mention that Russell Gale, 
our assistant city manager of administration, and Lee Zirk. I saw Lee. Lee's here. Uh, they are going to be the person, individuals are going to be responsible for implementing the pilot programs. So let me say this, is no decision's been made. Whether you're for recycling, against recycling, think it's a gracing size and spice bread, or it's the devil, okay? No decision has been made. What we're going to do is we're going to have two pilot programs, and this is how it's going to work. We're going to have one program that's 500 customers that's going to be one container for recycling, and you continue to pick up your trash and bags once a week. And then we're going to have 500 customers that are going to get two carts, one for recycling, and one for trash, and we're going to pick it up once a week, and we're going to evaluate those results for six months. That program is going to kick off in January, and we're going to tabulate the results and present them to the city council sometime this summer, and then the city council will be, have the unenviable task of having to decide uh, whether, of course, I have to make a recommendation, so I don't know why I'm laughing, uh, uh, on whether or not we change. And if we do change, it will be a substantive change in the way we do um, or provide service to the community. Now, I will tell you is that I don't have an opinion, but one thing I do have an opinion on is, folks, it's hard to find people and to retain people that want to throw trash. Extremely difficult. About 15% at minimum of our employees come from a temp agency because we can't keep folks in those positions to maintain that continuity. We have 13 or 14 trash routes that we have to run every single day. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but that turnover is a problem for Mr. Zirk and for Russell. And so regardless of what council decides ultimately is that we have to look at doing things differently because people are just not wanting to do the work they did years ago today. It's hard to keep those people and no matter how many times I tell people that, all they hear is I don't, don't get rid of my bags. Well, I, 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 I understand that. I, believe me, I understand it. I had about 20 this past uh, Tuesday and it was great putting them all out and when I got home they were all gone. Okay? I also know is that we have a responsibility to be good stewards of the environment. And so we're going to look at this, and we'll get the council result. And the final thing that I want to mention, which is extremely important, I know Kenny Tilly understands this as well as many people in this room, is you have to maintain an important emphasis on economic development. Economic development administration is the fuel that drives the engine. And so besides public safety and public infrastructure, you have to put a, maintain a heavy focus on the recruitment and retention of the jobs within your committee, and that's what we're going to continue to do. If you don't take care of economic development, if you're not out there recruiting and retaining businesses, you will not have the resources to provide great services. And so we're going to continue to make sure that we have a strong focus on economic development. We have a great partnership with the Chamber and the EDC. Uh, Kenny Dilley is recognized both locally, statewide, and regionally as an expert in business retention and recruitment, and we're very fortunate to have her and her leadership. She has great partnerships at the state level, which actually turn, turns into jobs. And so we're looking forward to implementing our new model uh, this year, and we're going to continue to maintain a focus on both the recruitment. We're also going to make sure that we place a high emphasis on, on retention. Sales tax is the number one revenue source we have in the city, and we have to make sure we're out there trying to bring businesses or help those that are here grow so as the dollars get spent, that turns into tax dollars that actually help us provide great services. The other thing I'm excited to share with you is that we are going to continue to move forward with the new innovation district. And this is going to be something that over the, it's going to take several years to implement. The voters approved several million dollars in the bond package this year to help with the infrastructure. Is We want to create a place where we can recruit high-tech jobs to our community, whether that's in the manufacturing section or the technical section, but we want to create a place where, where we can create high-tech high jobs, high-paying jobs to increase and maintain the wealth of our city. We also want to have a district that develops partnerships with the public and private sector, and we're hoping those partnerships will turn into internships, educational opportunities, to where we can have those that have graduated go out into the innovation district or other businesses within the community and take those jobs that are going to be available. And so this is going to be an on ongoing effort. We're trying to find a location for uh, such a district within the city, and once we find that, the planning will continue. And finally, but last but not least, is that we have to continue to place a major emphasis on redeveloping the south part of our city. Right now, we have consulting services out for New Orleans and Elm Place, and we're also starting to see some growth in the south part of, part of the city on some land that the city owns, and so we're excited to say that we're starting to see that. Traffic counts are going up, new rooftops are going up, and eventually that's going to turn into additional businesses for that part of our community. So, just about finish up here, the three, three takeaways or key takeaways I'd like for you to take with you today 
is that we will continue to provide maximum transparency about what goes on at City Hall. Whether it's through social media, newsletter, face-to-face, -face, our goal is to make sure you know what's going on within our committee. Secondly is that we believe that our success is directly related to the involvement of our great citizens and our community partners. The city cannot do it alone. And that's why we will continue to work with our school districts, our work with our chamber, to work with our private sector to make sure that we, that the team above self, and help our city move forward. And finally, we will strive to deliver on our promises to get projects started and completed in a reasonable time frame. So in closing, let me just say this. This is a great time to be a part of Broken Arrow. And I would encourage everyone to get involved with either the chamber or the city or any other organization and be a part of what's happening. Secondly is that we do look forward to working with everyone for the benefit and advancement of our city. And finally, let me wish everyone a Merry Christmas and may God bless you and keep our great city, state, and country. Thank you.